Oh boy, every year I find that one film. Let's talk about it. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to a spoiler-filled discussion of the movie Stop Motion. This film is directed by Robert Morgan. Okay, word of warning, spoiler-filled review. We'll talk about the plot for uh, a few minutes before I get into my spoiler-filled details of what I think is happening in this film, which is uh, could be determined or interpreted either way. There's a lot of different ways this movie could be interpreted, but I'll give you what my thoughts are on this film. Okay, so in the world of stop motion, we follow characters played by Ashling Franchosi, who plays Ella. She's an individual that with her mother, who is uh, severely uh, handicapped, uh, who's played by Stella Gune, uh, they are developing a, um, a Cyclops stop motion film. And if you don't know what stop motion is, think of like Chicken Run, or if, you're, if you see Mad God, think of stuff like that. And as her mother gets more and more sick to the point where she's in the hospital, this character of Ella decides she's going to do the film on her own well she meets a little girl who kind of uh instills some interesting ideas into her her story which changes the idea of what's going on and we are introduced something to that is called the ashman which is this like you know babadook style creature and she starts to kind of unravel as the movie moves along with the help of this little girl and her boyfriend and friend and stuff like that so basically it's a body horror film in a lot of respects so with that said, uh, to be fairly honest, I didn't honestly know much about this film. Um, I saw a couple pictures. I haven't seen the trailer. Uh, what I have seen picture-wise, it really looked interesting to me. Some people on the Twitter X or whatever you want to call it said it was amazing. Uh, they also said it was a body horror film. I'm all about body horror films when it comes to like you know David Lynch and of course David Cronenberg. And um, I'm all about you know using interesting creative techniques to make an interesting horror film because that's what it is. It's a horror film that's being released by IFC Midnight. And so here I am, I'm able, I was able to see it a couple days early and, uh, my honest non-spoiler review of this film is it's going to take some spoiler talk to honestly give my honest opinions of this film, but I enjoyed it. I liked it. It's that film of the, at least at this point, it's that film of the year, like Possessor or Mandy or, you know, any of these films I talk about every year where there's that one film that kind of sneaks in there when evil lurks and stuff like that. And it was a very interesting experience. It was a very unique experience. It's not something I have seen actually almost ever to be fairly honest i think this is the closest to a cronenberg slash david lynch film that i have seen in some time and on top of that it's using stop motion which the, the little creatures that they're using for stop motion feel something like something out of tools sober video or phil Tippett's mad god movie and i really like that i really like when they are able to take that idea and that you know uh, that illusion and make it you know a creepy horror film with creepy characters and give some interesting ideas and concepts to it, which i'll talk about in spoilers but i found you know asian uh, franchosi was really good she was of course in the nightingale which if you've seen that it was a really popular film um stella gane who is in this uh at the beginning but not much after that is pretty good the little girl who's played by uh kaylin springala springal i'm sorry i mispronounced that she's fantastic and there it's just you you watch this film as it unravels and you're you're kind of wondering what is going on and you're trying to wait for the ending to see if there's like a real message and you realize the message is being played out throughout the movie and if you really think about it and really understand and kind of read up on it you kind of understand why robert morgan who is a, who is a stop motion animator did what he did for this film and why he is uh, why he created the way he did and I give a lot of credit, you know, it's his first film, his first theatrical film, and what he was able to produce it was uh, some really visceral stuff, and I, I really love it for that. So it's one of my favorite films of the year just on that, that realm. Is it the greatest story? No, because it is very confusing at some points. Um, it does some things which don't make any sense uh, when it comes to her her character, when it comes to Ella's character development, which is the uh, Ashling character. Um, but... I can get past that when the movie is willing to do things and willing to be things that are wholly unique in a world that is not wholly unique when it comes to filmmaking. So I, I, I look past that. I do like the fact that, you know, there's a certain point where uh, Ella's character does something. And from that point on, you're kind of wondering, is it what is happening or is it what is in you know what is not happening it's really hard to explain without spoilers because there's so much like stuff that people are just not going to understand with this film which is perfectly all right but similar to like i said with possessor similar to mandy or when evil lurks or 
uh, climax and stuff like that. There's, it's just it's one of those films that they do every year that comes out every year that just completely takes me off guard. And I'm really happy that this movie is releasing. It's going to be in theaters for a couple of weeks. It's going to go straight to Shutter at some point. And I I really love what this movie's doing. It has a really it's really gruesome. It's up there with you know some of the most gruesome things I've seen in quite a while. And what they do with certain pieces of meat is quite interesting um so yeah i'll talk about that in spoilers but it's it really is if you like good body horror film if you like good films that make you like question what exactly is happening it, that will confuse you that will make you t- go for a ride and journey i think this movie's for you if you don't like good gruesome horror films this is not a film that you'll want to watch so overall really liked it probably one of my favorite films of the year so far and uh but yeah that'll uh, end my spoiler free discussion of this film uh be aware i'm going to spoiler discussion here in just a second but if you do stop here thank you so much comment below on what you think of this film if you watch it all that good stuff but otherwise let's hit in the spoilers so I always love a good film that makes you think about what is the implications of what the director is portraying on screen, whether it be abuse, whether it be obsession, whether it be a, just a great old monster movie with like crazy creatures that are possessive of the world. It, it, this is what when good horror works, it works really well. And this film is uh, right up there with like films that really work really well when it comes to the horror films. Because it, it, when I when I finished watching this film, I I, I was thinking I, I did I'm doing this review like the day after, which I never do because usually I can get the concepts and idea of what's happening in the movie. But here I'm like sitting here going, what is this movie telling me? What is this movie saying? What is Robert Morgan putting out there into the world? What is he asking for you to kind of figure out? Because this movie is extremely confusing. It's about a woman who, you know, basically loses her mother and she has to take over a film. She meets this young girl who kind of starts shaping her mind and stuff like that. And it starts, you start questioning like what's real, what's not, what exactly is happening? Is, is this a film about abuse? Is this a film about obsession? What is this film portraying itself in horror, film, horror fashion? But what is it, what is it saying? And that's where I'm trying to get with my spoiler discussion because there, there is a couple different ways you could see this film. And like I said, I've already just mentioned the two that I think you could see it in different ways, but there are probably other ways you could see this film. But I went and looked up some information about what this film could be, and I found a Collider article, and what basically what I've gathered, because it's still not entirely 100% what the, what the movie's about, is it's about obsession, for the most part. Um, it felt like the stop motion characters were dealing with like abuse, because there was a young girl, like this really weird, creepy looking young girl, who is being stalked by this thing called the Ashman, which is... You know, it could be signifying like because uh, the, the way the, the way the little girl or what young woman looks, her eyes are like completely red and she looks like she's been beaten by like her father or her husband or something like that. And I thought that's where this movie was going, because, you know, the way the mother who is very much uh, disabled in a lot of respect, she can't use her hands. So she's using her daughter to make this film, the stop motion film is a very uh not very nice person she's very abusive so i figured after her mother died she was able to let loose her views on the world of like how her mother treated her and the little girl seems to always pop up at just like different moments so i was thinking maybe the little girl was her and she became like super abusive to the little girl or the little girl was the mother and was telling her what to do and stuff like that and i thought that was uh interesting i thought that was a good way to understand that this film like the way it portrays the way she's like she becomes so detached from reality because she's starting to use her uh her history of abuse and starts to kind of form into this this really disturbed world that she like is putting out there to at least to her killing her two friends or her boyfriend or uh, friend or whatever. But then I started looking into it a little bit more and I started kind of understanding what was happening and it honestly becomes a film about, and this is really interesting because a lot of people in the film world will will say this is a film about, to me personally, this is a film about obsession. And what I mean by that, this woman is so under the guise of her mother, and you could think of like the Hollywood system, that it causes us to uh, really focus on the passion that we have for the particular medium. For me, it's film and stuff like that. And sometimes we do things that could be considered unruly or unscrupulous when it comes to making films. And the the level of depthness and darkness that some people will go 
when it comes to making stuff and how committed like you can look at like star wars or you can look at you know lord of the rings like think about how far and how deep your psychosis has to go to make these worlds happen to create these worlds you look at something like mad god and how committed and how kind of he, how much you know phil tippett put himself into mad god and how much george lucas put himself into star wars and how much peter jackson put himself in the lord of the rings you start to kind of change on that level your mind changes your ideas change your psychosis change when you're either under the guise of the studio system or you're unchained when you have your own money and doing stuff like that and the obsession that this this woman ella goes through it becomes very very apparent where the little girl basically becomes Tyler Durden, where she is basically controlling this woman into creating this like really deeply disturbing character. And once again, you can add that abusive nature to the creature itself, the Ashman, and how it like wants to control this woman and wants to control who she is. And then you have her obsessive nature of like making this world and how deeply disturbing it becomes with the the Ashman and the, the little girl and how she uses like the meat and the stuff like that to like form over the character and it. It really becomes a movie about like how far are you willing to go to make perfection and are you willing to sacrifice everything and I think that's what it, ultimately what it down, comes down to in this film is the sacrifice that she will, is willing to make and it becomes so she becomes so entrenched in this world of stop motion animation and what she's doing is she completely neglects everyone she goes on what i was talking about earlier on was she she thinks she's going on like an acid trip when she takes a pill or when you think she takes a pill but no she's clearly just becomes so out, out of tune out of touch of everything and so detached from reality that she's starting to think the ashman is real and it's just you watch what she does to her leg and you watch how she just creates this like really uncomfortable world that feels something straight out of like tool or mad guy and it really is a fascinating thing to watch it's i think ageline franchosi does a really nice job of portraying just how weird and crazy and how um entrenched you become when you become super like focused on something that be, kind of takes over your life and that could be anything that could be youtube that could be writing a book that could be you know taking care of kids you know when that stuff becomes like you know too much for you it starts to affect your personality it starts to affect your emotions and i, I found that really impassionate and stuff like that but i think what it comes down to what it boils down to is she finally is um basically wholly entailed into this world and she's fully formed into it you know you see at the very end when her you know she sees the ashman coming towards her and all of a sudden her face becomes the wax that she talks about how they use the wax and stuff like that how they use stuff to form the the faces on stop motion and you know how artiman uses clay but i think you know she's finally just kind of given in and let the ashman take over and she basically dies and she kills her friend and friends in very violent fashions and stuff like that and it reminds me a little bit of starry eyes where once again it, what are you willing to do to make yourself famous and she i don't think this woman and i don't think ella in this movie makes herself famous but i think she, the um the passion and drive that she has like in starry eyes it really shows in this film and it, it's really kind of a crazy thing to see but at the very end when she becomes the wax and the ashman is like molding her face in the wax and she it starts eating the wax and it really is a visceral film to be fairly honest i gotta give robert morgan a lot of credit because if you I, if you kind of look at his filmography this is the kind of stuff he works with and when it comes to like the the idea of psychosis and the idea of psych psych psychology and stuff like that um the use of like really kind of uh, gothic creatures in a lot of respects and i i found that really fascinating and, and like i said you can see in the early parts of the film where the cyclops is like you know this kind of misunderstood creature and kind of doesn't know what to do and then it turns into this like horrifying forceful uh character and this young woman that's being approached by the demons and stuff like that so i really appreciate it for that but like i said it's the stop motion in this film is absolutely incredible it's some of the ones when people do stop motion they do it well it, it's almost seamless and you know like if you watch mad god or something like that it's it's an art where it's an art and it's a really difficult thing to do and it's really tedious and you see how they you they, they move the head like a millimeter take a picture move it another millimeter take a picture and after 24 24 of those movements they have a second of film and you can imagine how difficult that is that's kind of my thoughts like i said once again at the very end of this film when she's killed her friends and she's taken i guess body parts or stuff and turned these actual characters into basically her real life 
thoughts because <laughs> she presses the she presses the one little girl and then kind of the, the little girl comes to life and stuff like that and I, I don't know it's 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 crazy stuff but yeah it's um it's definitely one of the most unique films i've seen this year it's one of the most unique stop motion films i've seen since i mean mad god but i've seen in quite a while and once again this is not a film for everyone this is gonna be a very difficult very hard film to watch because it is very gruesome very dark and disturbing and has a lot to say and i, I appreciate robert morgan for doing that but it's just not a film it's like when evil lurks it's not a film for everyone so anyways uh, with that said uh that is gonna be my spoiler filled discussion for uh, stop motion what i think the film is trying to say once again i understand if this is not what you think it's trying to say if you think it's trying to say something different please let me know in the comments i'm more than happy to read them and i'll you know I, I find it interesting to see what people think and then you know some of the other spoiler discussions i've done in the horror film Films have not been necessarily stuff that people agree with but that's perfectly all right you know it is the way it is but you know like i said it is what it is so anyways in the comments below what do you think this film is doing did you like it overall all that good stuff but otherwise uh thank you so much that's a, that'll do it on my take on stop motion the spoiler filled discussion version uh with that said anyways thank you so much for watching if you like what you see on this channel hit the subscribe button the join movie emporium hit that notification bell top the fun is coming next if you like this video awesome hit that like button and as always we'll see you guys on the next video peace out